Hello and welcome back, race fans, to Gross MTV. We are here live at week number 11 here in the GTCC. We're here for race at number three here at Circuit Zolder, and we are only one week away from the final week of the season as we will visit Road Atlanta for the grand finale of this season here. And what a season it's been so far. Currently, Doug Beard is the points leader. But coming into Zolder, we've seen in races one and two, Kane, that we have just seen fantastic driving by both C.P. Allen and Rob Fagg. Rob has won both races one and two with C.P. Allen coming in second in both races. Doug Beard, unfortunately, has been has been in, unable to finish near the top. And so that's going to end up making it really tight going into Road Atlanta, barring this third race. So this race is really one of the most crucial races that we have seen up to this point in the season. I'm J.D. Smith. Alongside me in the booth is Kane Craft here for race number three, Kane. And that about sums it up there as we look at looking at the points going into this weekend. That is how close it is. Unbelievable to this point. It's been a very close series, and that's what's kept it, kept the racing so good here, and what's kept it so ex exciting. This series has definitely been exciting because a lot of the drivers are so close in, in talent and speed, so you know, watching this point championship unfold over the course of the last few weeks has been pretty exciting, and it's still anyone's game. It really is, and if, and if I'm one of these drivers, I'm going to do nothing next week, but or this week and leading up into the next week, do nothing but practice Road Atlanta, because I think it's going to come down to Road Atlanta for three drivers. Uh, it's going to either be Doug Beard, Rob Fagg, or C.P. Allen at Road Atlanta, and they all three of them will probably have a chance to take the title here, so... That is going to be what's fun to watch, but nothing right now has been more important to this point than this third and final race here. You're not going to want to miss it. Team Overkill and warm-ups right now riding side-by-side. Side. Both Jim Pankton and Rob Fagg both doing a phenomenal job here at Zolder. Uh, we've seen Rob win both races one and two. Jim Pankton doing a phenomenal job getting a podium there in race two and, and race one, I believe, as well. And uh, what a great job by this team, and uh, good to see them. Matt Gelder showing up well for mile marker race and uh, Brewing Company racing as he finished fourth in races two right there. Doug Beard, unfortunately, having a little bit of trouble here at Zolder so far. That could change during race number three, guys. It could. Doug Beard is definitely a very talented driver, and if he can get through the race course, this race does have the reverse grid, and he was... Kind of far back in the field, so I don't know where that's going to put him in the lineup. It could very well put him right up at the front. So, you know, depending on if there's any more bad luck, he definitely has the, the speed and the drive to, to win this thing. But does he have the luck? That's right, and it's definitely going to take that because this track, as you know, Kane, is one of the toughest tracks to pass on that we'll go to all season long. It's so hard to get a pass here. With all the crucial chicanes and uh, tough slowdowns, it's going to be hard for these guys. And uh, you mentioned it a little earlier, Kane. It's going to be really tough for these guys to watch out for those evil slowdown penalties. They can be really costly. And uh, we saw a fast C.P. Allen in race two, and I think without that slowdown penalty, he might have had a shot at an overtaking possibility with Rob Fagg for the win. So uh, ultimately, a slowdown penalty could have led to him getting second instead of a win there in race two. We'll see how it fares for the drivers here in this third race as they're getting ready to finish up warm-ups. Yeah, just a few seconds left in warm-ups, then they'll all start to grid and get ready for the, la the third and final race of the, of the day. And... Uh... I'm sure they're excited to get this race underway, and I know I'm excited for the last race of the night. Yeah, I'm very excited, and I can't wait for the grid results to pop up in just a second so I can see how this reverse grid will head out. I know in warm-ups, looking at the time, Seat Allen did have the fastest warm-up time. Now not everybody is uh, warming up at a... At a 
you know qualifying speed so it's hard to this is how they will grid though we've seen it before the number 46 martini kia peter hebron on the pole he's won from the pole before this season in a race kyle heron is starting second arthur harmont in the third position with matt gelder in fourth jim Paintman back in fifth with cp allen in sixth rob fag in the seventh position with simon goodwin in eighth the ninth goes to doug beard with mario gerard in the tenth position Joe Odell finishes out the uh, in 11th. Kane, I'll let you take a screen, buddy. Alrighty. It looks like they're getting ready to go, Green. They're off. I don't have volume. There we go. Look at this. Three wide going into turn one. Peter Hebron able to break free from the crowd. A good job there by Peter Hebron as that could have been really crucial. You don't never want to go three wide into turn one. Here they are. Two wide trouble right now. Kyle Herring gets into Matt Gel or uh, Is that my Matt Gelder? I couldn't tell. He hit one of the mile marker brewing companies. I believe it was Matt Gelder. Kyle Herring. Okay, though. Able to save it. That was Matt Gelder. Matt Gelder able to save himself and hold second position for now. Peter Hebron breaks away to a nice lead here at Zolder. And Jim Pankton in the third position right now. Good job by Jim. Hang in there, Kyle Heron able to hang in there in fourth. Right now, side by side, C.P. Allen and Kyle Heron. C.P. Allen able to get the advantage heading into the chicane. Is he going over? Oh, he just cuts in front of Kyle Heron right there. A good swift move there by C.P. Allen in the number 16 black and yellow Kia. And what a crucial race this is, this third and final race. Peter Hebron has every bit of Matt Gelder on his bumper right now. This is a fantastic race right now, Kane. Yeah, looks like Doug Beard run into another little piece of bad luck. Maybe that wasn't Doug. I Tell you what, look at the, the front right now as we got side-by-side -side racing for the lead. Matt Gelder having to slow down just a hair, buddy. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump in there, but it was just exciting not to at the lead. Uh, Doug Beard really, I mean not Doug Beard, I apologize. Doug Beard's teammate Matt Gelder trying to overtake Peter Hebron for the lead. Has the inside going into turn three right now. Going to get the new lead. We have a new leader side-by-side -side right now is Jim Pankton. He goes to the inside of Hebron. He's going to make the best for second. It's going to move Peter Hebron down to third. What a move by Peter Heb I mean by uh, Matt Gelder and Jim Pankton to move into the first and second positions. Yeah, hopefully uh, Peter Hebron won't let that shake him up too much, and he'll uh, stay focused and keep a hold of that third position. But uh, great move by by Matt and Jim Pankman to you know, to take that position. And moving into the chicane right now, if you're looking on, guys, back in the fourth position right now is the number 28 team overkill Kia of Rob Fagg. He's won races one and two. He started out a little bit back in the pack, has already moved up to the fourth position, and is already on the third place uh, tail of uh, Peter Hebron could be look, looking to make a pass into the podium position right now. He could be a real threat and a real possibility Kane here to get this uh, hat trick. It's going to be fun to see if he can pull it off. Man, I tell you what, Matt Gelder doing a fantastic job right now. Out in the lead, holding off the number 77 of Jim Pankton. They're heading down towards the start finish line right now to start lap number three. What a fantastic race so far. Killer job by Matt Gelder. He almost had a bad run in at the beginning of the race with Kyle Heron. Both drivers able to save it. And look at uh, Matt Gelder right now, Kane. He's really jumping out to a nice size lead. Yeah, taking a look back in the field at his teammate, Doug Beard. Doug really has a lot of damage to the front of his car, so I think that might have been him that I seen earlier on go head first into the wall and uh didn't look like they hit it too hard it was into the tire barrier but uh definitely some damage there for doug beard that he's having to fight while fight the car while making his way around this track 
Man, tough break for the points leader, but I want to move our attention back up to the top three right now. Robert Fagg in the number 28, riding right on his bumper of teammate Jim Pankman. We could look for to see Rob make a move here coming up to the chicane right now. Look at how these top three, look at the top five uh, right now. They're really all together for a moment. This is exciting racing right now. Matt yeah, Gilder the five of these guys are definitely right on his tail. very skilled drivers in there. All got a lot of good speed on this track, so I look to see them all having a great fight clear through this race. Yeah, this is really fantastic. It's only lap three, fixing to start lap four in just a moment, like we said, of ten. So it's almost a heat run, a little bit longer than races one and two as they were only eight laps. This one will be full ten. And really going to come down to the wire here. But look at that right now. It just looks unreal. Uh, amazed at how Doug Beard has been able to hang on to the damaged Kia back there. The number 23 mile marker brewing company. Kia is really good, doing a good job. Hanging in behind Arthur Harmon back there. And doing a good job as Arthur Harmon is in the fourth position. Here we see Rob Fagg going around teammate Jim Pankton. He is going to try to move up into the second position. Will he be able to get around the number 77 teammate? They're door to door right now going around. And Rob's on the inside trying to make it happen. Is he going to? They're still door to door. They're going to have another chance right here. Rob's going to take the inside line. Is on the curb, and he will make a successful pass. Look at Arthur Harmon try to tuck in behind Rob and go with him. Doug Beard right there. We're almost a big clump of cars, four cars within a tiny bit of room. And look at this move by Jim Pankton to take it right back. Killer job right there. I think he's going to get a slowdown, though. Man, Rob Fag, trouble for Jim Pankton. He got stuck back there with a slowdown. Yeah, that kind of stinks. He tried to make the move back there to get it, get the spot back from his teammate and got a couple tires off track. And it's real easy to do on this track and get that slow down. And those guys being in such a tight line, it just took him back all those positions back into fifth place. Man, I tell you what, everybody right there was fighting for position. That is what racing's all about, folks. I don't care what kind of racing you like. If you don't like that, you're watching the wrong show. That was four cars just fighting for position, and what a what a fun battle that was to see. And look at this right now. Rob Fagg, one races one and two, fighting his way up to leader Matt Gelder. Matt Gelder's got to be getting nervous seeing that car right there. One thing he's got to like seeing, though, is teammate Doug Beard in the third position. Yeah, Doug's made his way up into third, and even driving that car that's got some damage, so it must be handling okay because he's racing with some very fast guys, and he's keeping up. Yeah, this is definitely exciting. Really looking, uh, got to give really big credit as he gets a couple tires off the track, but he's okay. Our leader right now, the number 69 of Matt Gelder, doing a fantastic job of holding this lead. He jumped out ahead of Peter Hebron early in the race and has not looked back. Here we see Rob Fagg going to try to go to, oh, he's going to tuck back in and uh, decides better as they approach the chicane. He figures it's only lap five. We're halfway through the race this time by, so don't want to get too risque just yet. Well, Matt's really got to stay calm and just concentrate on his race and not be worrying about Rob in behind him. Matt kind of has a habit of getting flustered and uh, kind of letting that affect his driving style. And uh, I hope that he just tries to keep calm and keep his car under control because, you know, Rob's pushing hard. Look at this. Here he goes. In the inside, he's going to try to make the pass. We got teammate off track for Matt Gilder. He cuts back in just in time, but he's going to fall behind Rob Fagg. We got a new leader, folks. Sorry, Kane. Oh, that's perfectly okay. His teammate Doug Beard coming to the inside, going to go ahead and get around him, and uh, Matt goes ahead and lets him by. Yeah, that is a great move by Matt Yoder to let his teammate Doug Beard get in there and fight the points championship battle with Rob Fagg. This is awesome, ladies and gentlemen, as Rob Fagg is trying to attack Doug Beard for the points championship, trying to soak in on the hat trick. Will it be able to happen, or will we see Doug Beard in the number 23 mile marker Kia with a beat-up, banged-up wreck trying to catch up to this? This would be amazing if Doug Beard could take that wreck up there and pass Doug Beard for the win. I meant pass Rob Fagg for the win. That, that would be amazing, Kane. This is what it's all about. Doug Beard's definitely got the speed to have had an incident like that and then be able to catch up to the pack and then be able to pass the pack and get up into second spot. He has got some tremendous speed in that car, so 
I'd say a couple laps, oh. and we'll be seeing him catch right back up to the leader and be putting the pressure on. Yes, here we are on lap number six of ten, and we are seeing Doug Beard just move it with force. He's uh, really trying to get up there and catch up to Rob Fag. Both of these drivers need to be ultra careful with slow down penalties. This is going to be crucial, crucial, as both drivers got to be nervous, sweating bullets right now, with fighting for the championship. What a crucial week this is, the final week before we go into our finale week at Road Atlanta next week. Cannot wait. This is just one of the most crucial races we've had this point in the season. It's definitely an important race, especially for Robert Fagg. He's fallen just a touch behind in the points, so to get a hat trick tonight definitely is going to be a boost for his confidence going into that last race, plus a boost for the points. Yeah, big break for him right there. As you see Doug Beard going off the track, just a hair, not too much, just a little hair off the curb there. And so Doug Beard's got to just kind of regroup. He's actually fast enough in the beat-up car, I think think he could catch him but Robert Fagg what he needs to do is just stay focused and do what he's done in races one and two just drive the car this is a tough track to pass on don't get too nervous when the guy you know when Doug gets up on his bumper he's not getting overly nervous he's keeping a nice smooth race line and that's causing him to be able to hold this lead and actually right now he's actually broken away Kane for a nice little lead uh, it's not too far but it can't be caught as we are only on lap number seven but it's still, it's a nice little lead. He just needs to calm down and hold on to it. Looks like Arthur Ramont's caught Matt Geller there in third place and is putting some pressure on Matt. But Matt's doing a good job of keeping a clear head and uh, keeping keeping the car with having nice pace in, in front of Arthur there. And it's uh, looks like it's going to be pretty challenging for Arthur to get by. Yeah, that's definitely fun to watch right there as you're looking for the mile marker brewing company to take the team championship. That is Matt Gelder and Doug Beard in the number 23 and 69. Uh, that would be really fun to see them get the, the team championship. And with them running in second and third right now, that's definitely going to help their chances, Kane. Yeah, it definitely will. Having uh, both them guys up on the podium is definitely good for the points. Arthur Harmon in the number 80 that Kane was talking about just a second, making uh, maybe making a move around right now. Going to try to poke out there. No, he's going to tuck back in uh, behind the mile marker 69 of Matt Gelder. But Arthur Harmon, we welcomed him with open arms to the league. It's uh, great to see him back. I can't say for the first time as he has been a member of the GRA before. But it's great to see Arthur Harmon back, and I hope he continues to drive in the GTCC next season, Kane. Uh, good to see him here in the with the 8 for 80 team. I uh, wonder what happened to Fabrizio Batticella this week. That's, that's hard to say. Uh, Mauro Girard just coming out of the pits must have had some kind of incident there. Yeah, very, very unfortunate week for Mario Girard as he is three laps down right now. Uh, his teammate Joe is uh, on the lead lap in ninth position. Good to see Joe doing he, okay. He's he does right behind C.P. Allen. Though. He's on the lead lap, but he's definitely got some damage, Joe does. But uh, he's still maintaining pace, and he's in the top ten. That's right, buddy. And if he can just hang on for a little bit longer, that damage won't matter. As we're only on lap number eight of ten, and soon they will be on lap number nine, Kane. And I'm telling you, uh, if he can just hang on a little bit longer, he can hold on to that ninth position. But for him to be able to hang there with the number 16 black and yellow Kia of CP Allen, that's huge. Uh, CP has been one of the fastest drivers here all weekend. Right now, our leader, Rob Fagg, coming up on lap traffic. Uh, it's going to cause some cause for concern as uh, about the time he'll catch him should be sometime on lap 8, which we're on now, or it could hit him on lap 9. This could be really big news for Doug Beard back there in the second position if he gets up to Joe O'Dell. Uh, Joe's a great sport, so I'm sure he'll let Rob right on by, but still, you don't want to get caught up in lap traffic. This possibility is there. Yeah, I'm... I'm sure Doug is hoping that uh, he gets held up just a little bit as uh, there is over two and a half seconds between the two. I'm, I'm sure he's hoping that he Oh, yeah, up, Joe. But, uh, Joe, of course, just moves on over and lets him by, lets him have at it. 
Joe about one of the best in the business when it comes to being a team player and uh, gets over for both Robert and Douglas and a uh, big move right there. A big uh, both drivers tip their hats to Joseph Odell there in the number 32 diagonal motors Kia killer job there by Joe. Uh, that's what it's all about. That's what makes Grassim so great. I love being a member of the Global Racing Association myself, Kane. It's just you know it's a proud place to home when you have guys that are like this, always up for. Uh, sportsmanship and really friendship over over uh, a petty position so that's you know that's great yeah it is these guys have done a great great job of promoting this kind of you know friendship type of behavior good sportsmanship behaviors and uh, it really shows in the league we are on board now with Douglas Beard as he's trying to trying to chase down your leader Robert Fagg and as we watch right now, the white flag is waving. Ladies and gentlemen, we start lap number 10, the final lap here at Circuit Zolder in race number three. As you're looking on board right now, we'll see if we can walk you through what we're seeing out of the uh, front cockpit view of Robert, I mean, excuse me, Doug Beard looking on to Rob Fack there. Look as you see him coming around this right hander, almost like a half carousel type turn there. Really tough, uses all the curb right there. Here you see him get on the brakes nice and easy. Gets over, uses the inside curb, brings the car all the way out to this outside curb. Uses This is one of the good passing opportunities. Unfortunately, he's a little bit too far behind Doug to, I mean, behind Robert to make a move. Here you see the first of these three chicanes, beautifully done by Doug. And there you see him using the inside. He's going to try to open up to use every bit of the track he can because this is another chicane. He's going to have to wash off all that speed before entering this second chicane. This is the most difficult chicane to me. Uh, then you see him right here, halfway through the circuit right now. This is very important for Rob up there to make his move to, I think he's going to be able to get the hat trick if he's able to keep up, Kane. Thanks for this awesome onboard camera. Yeah, taking a look back now at Arthur Mont, who has made his way past Matt Gelder and overtook that podium position, putting Matt Gelder back in the fourth position. And that is a great job by Arthur Harmon. Real quick, want to go back up to the number 28, going around the final turn and on his way to get the hat trick here at Circuit Zolder. We'll see you at Road Atlanta, ladies and gentlemen, for a finale. You say we got a points championship to fight for? This is amazing. Doug Beard finishes in the second position. Arthur Harmon crossing in the third. Matt Gelder back in the 69th crosses in fourth with Jim Payton in the 77 going to cross in fifth. How about this? Peter Hebron battling real hard back there in the sixth position. He's going to uh, cross in six. So good job by the Martini number 46 driver of Peter Hebron. Kyle Heron back there in the number 25. You, you see uh, Kia coming across. He'll be uh, heading by this way in just a minute. Good job here by all the drivers here in the GTCC in week number 11. This is crazy, Kane. Can't wait to go to the finale next weekend. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be fantastic. I'm real curious to see how the points wash out after this hat trick by uh, Robert Fagg. And with Douglas not having the best of weekends, uh, one Look at that burnout. is pretty good. But uh, the other two races, not so great. So that gives Robert Fagg a chance to catch up. Killer burnout there by, by Rob Fagg. Nothing like watching a Kia burnout there, Kane, in the, in the front-wheel drive uh, race cars. Love watching the backwards burnouts. They're always fun to watch. But I agree with you 100%, buddy. Just what a killer job and, and what, a, what an event we have in store. Can't wait to add up points after this week and see just the exact numbers. And we will have to go ahead and figure in where what the different scenarios will be for the race next week so that we'll be able to let you guys know where they'll have to finish to to clinch the title that's going to be very interesting all as always check to at grossm.us at grossm tv and check for the latest stories on the broadcast here and we always want to keep you up to date we try to update that uh, our web page there pretty frequently so check by all during the week and and check for those point standings in the next couple days and we'll definitely let you know the clinching scenarios There, I finally got it. I could not get that thing drug out where I wanted it, but uh, there's Rob Fagg's little hat trick. 
And how about that fantastic job there, Kane, getting that on there? That's it's tough, man. It's only the, what the second time we've seen it this season, and we saw Doug Beard do it earlier this season. He won all three. I'm trying to remember where he did it at, and then of course today you see Robert Fagan, the number twenty-eight team overkill Kia, pull it off here at Circuit Zolder in Belgium. Tough, tough track to pull off a hat trick, and he did it. And I have to say, he wasn't the fastest car out on the track today. I think the fastest car we saw today had to be C.P. Allen in the number 16, black and yellow. He uh, obviously wasn't as fast in the third race, but I tell you, in races one and two, Kane, he was absolutely lightning. He was so fast. And uh, Rob did a good job of doing a smooth, clean race to hold him off and uh, did it cleanly. He didn't do it in a bad way. He just held his race in line and uh, actually made... Uh, C.P. Allen, unfortunately, just got that uh, that slowdown penalty, and I think that ultimately cost him a chance at, at, at fighting for the lead there. Yeah, you're right. He definitely had the fastest lap time with the 137.90. Doug Beard had the second fastest with a 137.96, and uh, then Arthur Vermont with a 137.97. Robert Fagg won all three races. He definitely must have been the most consistent, and his fastest was a 138.103. Love the stats right there, Kane. Killer, killer stats there on your screen right now, folks. And, you know, I tell you what, one thing is we have truly enjoyed, this has been the very first season where we have done a series in its entirety, both the GV8 series and the GTCC series from race one all the way here to Zolder. It has been just one crazy event after an, after another, and the racing has been so competitive here in this league. As Kay mentioned earlier, the amount of talent is so close in competition here. You're, you're not seeing the same winner every week here. It's definitely anybody's week, and we've seen literally... Uh, more winners in this league than we've seen in any of the other leagues we've done uh, to this point in Grossim. So big, big shout out to the GTCC for the close points championship as it makes for super exciting races. And it's going to make for one heck of a race weekend next week at Road Atlanta. And hopefully we'll have a nice special uh, broadcast next week for him, Kane. Hopefully. Uh, I hope that we can put on a good broadcast for him for their uh, race finale at Road, Road Atlanta. That will be super fun, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to put something together that'll be a nice uh, finale for them. And uh, sure, it's going to be fun to watch. Cannot wait to get there. Well, guys, as you know, like we love to do here in the GTCC and all across MTV, we love to get driver interviews. And hopefully here in just a moment, we'll be able to get some of the drivers in with us. I think right now I already have race winner. He got the hat trick here at Zolder. Give it up for the number uh, excuse me, Team Overkills. Let me get that wonderful team name in there. And also, let's get uh, our race winner, not once, not twice, but three times, the number 28 of Robert Fagg. Rob, how you doing, buddy? Hey, guys. Yeah, very happy with that. So, uh, yeah, chuffed. Man, congratulations, buddy. Such a challenge to not win one race, but three in a row. That is just something else. You, you started out near the mid-pack there on the on the grid there. Can't remember exactly where you started. I remember looking, but of course I forgot by now. Uh, let's. I think you started uh, seventh, and uh, yeah, I think it was seventh. Yeah. And of course moved all the way up to first place and held it off. Doug Beard was coming up in a hurry there with a damaged <laughs> Kia, and you did a wonderful job of breaking away and uh, making sure that you didn't get in any trouble with uh, Doug Beard there. So. You know, you knew the task there, Rob, I mean, Rob and, you, and you did it. You, you had to, uh, you got max points, as they would say in NASCAR. You know, you did the max best you could this weekend, so how does that feel? That uh, feels really good. Obviously, I had a couple of bad weeks, um, especially at Brands Hatch. I think I only scored 20 points, which is the equivalent of just one race victory. So, um, yeah, it's good to come back from the bad luck, uh, finally have a, a bit of because there was a few cars spinning in that race that uh, luckily I saw quite early and went the right way and um, I'd like to thank Jim my tea bake because uh, I think I was squeezing him going into one of those chicanes and uh, he uh, obviously um, helped me as a teammate so um, yeah that no, was really good I mean I wasn't the fastest I don't think tonight so I think I was just fortunate that I managed to get the lead in the first two races and it's hard to overtake and then in the, the final race um, I just managed to stay out of trouble get the lead and uh, 
luckily I think uh, I think Doug had, had damaged his car, which is the only reason he didn't catch me. But um, yeah, it was, yeah, uh, so it was really good to what? finally get some wins. I tell you what, Rob, that is absolutely right. Uh, great example tonight of the fastest car. You don't always have to be the fastest to win because tonight there was faster cars. C.P. Allen in races one and two were just extremely fast. He was really fast here as older. Oh, and yeah. then uh, Doug Beard did a phenomenal job with a banged-up race car in race three. I thought he was going to uh, get up there and, and fight fight you there for a little bit for the victory and uh, just quite couldn't get there, but a fantastic job, Rob. Proud of the hat trick there. It's only been done once this season, and uh, – <laughs> That's by the uh, point leader going into this weekend, and that's Doug Beard. So thanks for talking with us, Rob. Always a pleasure. Look forward to Before I even get done with this interview, we're going into the points championship, the grand finale next week, Road Atlanta. What's it going to take to win next weekend? Um, some more good luck, hopefully. Um, as I say, Road Atlanta is probably not one of my strongest circuits, but you know, a bit of consistency, a bit of good luck, and you never know. I think... I've probably caught up quite a bit on Doug's lead. I think he was 40 points to the lead, so I've probably closed that down to 20, 20, 25 points. So it's all to play for in the final race. That's what we want to see that go down to the final week. So good job doing that for us, Rob, and congratulations, buddy. We're going to have a really good time next weekend at Road Atlanta. Cheers, guys. Thanks so much. And uh, next I want to bring you this Rob Fat Guys driver of the number 28 team overkill kia i want to talk next to the number 23 driver mile marker brewing company race team i want to bring in doug beard who is the points leader and doug how are you doing buddy i'm doing all right jd thanks for having me man absolutely want to just first of all what a killer job you did there in that third race bringing the banged up kia all the way up to second place you were zooming there for a little bit i thought you were going to be able to catch the leader uh, just quite didn't get it done with the 10 laps. Maybe needed just a few more, but a uh, fantastic job uh, with the car you had. That was uh, unbelievable. Thanks, JD. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I didn't. I don't quite think I had the race pace to uh, hang with Rob, even if my car were pretty, because uh, it definitely was not there. But and that was my own stupidity. I just uh, I should have known Arthur. It looked like Arthur was ahead of me, and he was uh, having to. He was being careful coming to the hairpin, and I was not. I was just keeping my eyes on my brake markers and. Uh, it kind of caught me out, and I just, I mean, I stood on the brakes, and I swore in ten different languages, and thankfully I didn't do any more damage than just some physical damage to his car, I hope. Um, hopefully he was able to carry on pretty well. I saw um, he was battling Matt pretty hard, which uh, pretty stoked for my teammate to have a, a great, great run, um, but really it was uh, it was all Rob all the time tonight, and, and he did a great job, so hats off to him. Patrick to him. Yeah, it was pretty fun, you and him battling for the points championship cp allen ought to be up there too uh, it'll be fun to see how the points pan out and like we said earlier in the broadcast make sure you check back at grossm.us hit the grossm tv section as as soon as we get the points figured out and everything i want to make sure we get the clinching information up there so when we watch the broadcast next week everybody knows where they need to finish to try to claim a championship or finish where they want to so that'll be fun to see doug can't wait to see uh what it's going to take there as you battle for the championship next week buddy yeah i definitely i gotta um rob will do the math for us and, and put it up and i'll i'll uh, take a look at it and figure out what i have to do and hopefully just uh a little bit of preparation and a little bit of luck, and uh, I'll bring home the bring home the cup because Rob did a good job going out and get some trophies for him. So I definitely want one of those. I'm stoked about it. So thanks. Yeah, they, they look fantastic, Doug. Thanks a lot, buddy. Is there anybody you want to thank, Doug? Oh, obviously the the mile marker crew, man, uh, Vance and the boys. Uh, they really, really, really hooked us up. Um, and you guys don't get to see it, unfortunately, but. Man, they have, they have some good brews. So, <laughs> if anyone's coming to St. Augustine, man, I, I, if you're in Florida, I know where to take you because they uh, Vance really does it up. He's the brewmaster, and he just uh, he's there. He busts his butt, and he he knows what's up. They get they go to contests, and they bring home the gold all the time. And it's uh, I can tell you, it's worth it. <laughs> I tell you what, Doug, I, I don't live too far from St. Augustine up here in Middle Georgia, man. I might have to come down there and pay my marker brew and company a visit. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Bring it on down, and we'll uh, <laughs> we'll definitely hit them up. Sounds like a springtime trip to me, man. I can't yeah. wait. Sun shining and some cold beer sounds great to me. Hey, doors open. Bring it on, man. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Always a pleasure, buddy. Good All luck right. next week, and uh, good luck trying to bring home the cup. Cheers, JG. Thanks, you guys. Thanks, Ken. 
And that's Doug Beard, everybody, driver of the number 23 mile marker and Brewer Company Kia. Good job. And I want to talk to his teammate, driver of the number 69 mile marker Kia, man. Killer job by Matt Gelder tonight. He fought hard, finished in fourth place in races two and three. Good job, Matt. Just shy of the just shy of the uh, podiums there, but a fantastic job all in all there for the number 69 tonight. Yeah, I'm pretty proud. I, I do need to apologize to, you, uh, to Kyle because uh, we were, I didn't know he was there when we were coming into that, first, that second corner. So by the sure time I you did. No, I'm just the kidding, Matt. Go ahead. <laughs> the only time, well, when I when Pete was slowing down for the right-hander, I knew he was going a little too slow, so I jumped out underneath him. Well, by the time I jumped out there, the spotter said there was a car below me, and by the time I had a chance to react, I already had ran into him. So I do apologize to Kyle, but yeah. Other than that, um, yeah, I got out in the lead because I knew I knew Rob and everybody was going to be coming, so I needed to get out there as fast as possible. And fortunately, I couldn't hold them off. And me and Arthur had a had a good fight there to the finish. Yeah, y'all definitely did, and we definitely enjoyed watching it. We actually enjoyed watching you hold off the lead for quite a while there, uh, Matt. You've really definitely shown a lot of improvement over the season. So really excited to see how you do next week in the season finale and can't wait to see how things pan out for you next season uh, as you just continue to improve as a driver. Yeah, hopefully uh, me and Doug can bring home the, the team championship, and uh, hopefully he'll, if we do that, he'll send me a case of beer. <laughs> Sounds like a uh, deal right there. And don't forget your broadcasters either. You know, we'll send some addresses right away, buddy. <laughs> oh, of course. I can't forget you guys. And then I'll have to send them to Rob and Joe and everybody too. So everybody might just get one. And uh, I do I do want to thank my girlfriend for putting up with me and letting me do this every week. So uh, I really special thanks to her. Absolutely, buddy. And I uh, hope you guys, I don't know if you got them yet or not, I hope you got your new uh, race suits for uh, the finale next week and i think i saw doug had his on today so hope you guys enjoy those as well buddy oh yeah i had a blast i had mine on i don't know if it's how well it showed up but i had mine on and i know doug had his on so yeah yeah we're pretty stoked for uh for next week we're gonna have to uh put our heads down and just keep charging yeah, absolutely buddy well thanks for coming by and talking to us matt always a pleasure buddy oh no problem all right, I'm going to switch paces just for a minute, and since we just got through talking with Matt Gelder right there, I want to talk to the guy that was on the other end of the contact right there, Kyle Heron, right at the beginning, had a fantastic start there, just unfortunate with uh, Matt Gelder and everything right there, we saw you unfortunately get spun around, Kyle, uh, tell us about it, big guy. I was just coming in, I saw Matt on my left, and he just, um, like he said, he probably just, you know, didn't notice I was there, it's, you know, it's, it happens, um, and he kind of pushed my car to the right and pushed me right off track. Um, I got back into the line, lost a few places, but uh, it didn't really matter because I ran to the wall in one of the chicanes and kind of put me out the rest of the race. Tough break, Kyle, but we saw you run there fast for a little while and in the other races as well, so... Uh, you know, all in all, not all is lost. Can't wait to see what happens next week at Road Atlanta. Uh, are, you, are you excited about Road Atlanta? Uh, not really. I don't like Road Atlanta. Me and the desert. <laughs> <laughs> we don't get along very well, but we'll see how the short track does. Sounds good, Kyle. Well, always good talking to you, buddy. Best of luck to you, my friend. Thank you. And as I move away, I want to move to another race team here. We haven't seen the full team on the track in quite a while, but Diagonal Motors. Joe is in the house. And Joe, how are you doing today, buddy? Hey, good to talk to you finally, JD. I'm doing all right. This is a great race. Uh, can't ask for anything better than that. That's right, buddy. Can't ask for anything better than that. I saw you and Mario running side by side for a little while. Said, you know what? They haven't had a chance to ride on the track as a team in a while. I just let them ride there for a while. They need to just get together and ride side by side for a while. <laughs> oh, it was a good time. It was great seeing the, the uh, teammate. He's definitely teaching me some stuff, and we're looking to come out hard and strong next year. We were contenders at one point. Had some time off this year, but uh, next year we're looking to really come back. We're going to be coming back as Road Shark Racing in, in all of our series. A lot of great things happening on the GRA as well. So, I don't know, a lot of exciting stuff. Really look forward to next season. Absolutely, Joe, and really a pleasure to see you back out on the track, buddy, as well as in the forums. And uh, thanks a lot for coming out. Good to see you on the track. 
Hey, no problem. Thanks a lot for having me, JD. You guys have a great night. Absolutely, buddy. That is Joseph O'Dell, ladies and gentlemen, driver of the number 32 Diagonal Motors Kia Funda here at We Road Shark Racing all throughout all series. And you know who has the Road Shark every week. That is none other than the number 27, Mario Gerard. Mario, good to see you, buddy. Hey, how you doing, guys? Absolutely, and I'm just thinking of uh, since we're doing road shark racing, I better get headed over to the paint booth, buddy, and uh, get to painting. I've painted a few <laughs> other suits, so uh, might as well get a road. Sh I can hear you, JD. Oh, I don't know. You said he couldn't hear me. Can you, Mario? Are you still there? Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, guys. I'm trying to figure out what was going on there. Uh, no, I was just gonna say, glad to hear y'all be back as Road Shark racing throughout all the series. That'll be fun. Definitely makes it easier for me and Kane. We enjoy that. We get to learn you guys as teams, and then we don't want to see them change. So, uh, good to see that, buddy. And uh, no, it wasn't the best week for you here at Zolder. But I know we'll see uh, <laughs> see you back to Mario Gerard form at Road Atlanta. Uh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it was a tough uh, night tonight for me. Um, but uh, I really enjoy uh, seeing my uh, teammate uh, beside me. And we had uh, um, enjoyed the, the time on the track uh, together. So really looking for next week, actually. Yeah, me too, buddy. At Road Atlanta, you know, it's only a f several miles from my house, about the miles, but still... Uh, love Road Atlanta, home track for me. Even though I'm not down on the track, I'm going to have fun up in the broadcast booth and uh, with my good friend Kane Craft. And uh, I guess in a way, he's my teammate here. So uh, we're going to have fun watching you guys uh, final week here in the GTCC. It's just been one heck of a season up to this point, and I uh, can't wait to see how the final week does. Best of luck to you, Mario. Hey, thank you very much again. And always a pleasure talking to all you guys, all drivers there. Kane, can you hear me, buddy? Yep, I'm here. Awesome. We're all here and good to go. We had a connection issue for a second there, but we we're good for to a go. Second, but they cleared up and all is well. Good deal. And uh, you heard it from all the drivers. It was really a fantastic uh, race here. We saw at Circuit Zolder here in Belgium. Uh, it's not the only track in Belgium, you know, it's the other big track, you know, they have the spa, f you know, down the road, but uh, this is actually a really good track. I know a lot of drivers, it's uh, very difficult, and a lot of drivers despise this place because of the chicanes, but it, it actually turned out to be a really good race to watch, and uh, we surely enjoyed it. I hope everybody at home watching enjoyed it, and guys, don't go anywhere uh, for next week, you're not going to want to miss the finale. We got to see a, our second hat trick of the season. How crazy is that, Kane? That is something you don't see very often. And a big, big congratulations to Doug Beard for doing it earlier this year, and Rob for doing it here this here today. Fantastic job by all the drivers. So, yeah, it was definitely a fantastic race. You know, the, the, for they were six cars deep in that train for the first seven laps or so. It was good close racing here tonight and that's what I really like to see that's what really gets me riled up is bumper to bumper racing for all those laps but next week we got the finale Road Atlanta it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun yeah and we're gonna try to put together quite a good broadcast for you guys for the grand finale so can't wait I uh, want to probably get with some of you maybe for some pre-race interviews that uh, I can do way before race time we can actually do some time during this week i'll talk more about it in the forums but uh thanks everybody for coming out tonight kane you got any final thoughts before we head into the final weekend no everybody just get rested up for next week because we've got a big show next week with the gtcc finale at road atlanta and i can't cannot wait it's going to be a pass kane all I want to say to everybody is thanks again for some good driving tonight. It really was great. Uh, really cleaned up tonight. Not very many uh, incidents tonight, so that was wonderful. And uh, very good clean racing out there. Um, so 
Good to see everybody. Make sure everybody practices well. We want to have some other racing next week at Road Atlanta. And uh, that's it for tonight, guys. Uh, can't wait. Make sure you check at grassm.us soon as Rob works really hard to get the points out to us. We can't wait to see how everything adds up. And like I said, as soon as we're able to figure it out, we'll post on Grassm TV as well the uh, the championship clinch scenarios to see who needs to score where to to win a championship. So that'll be fun to see. So check it grassm.us as well as Grassm TV for all your latest news in what's happening all around the GRA, not only in the GTCC, but as the Global uh, Super Cup as well, and the GV8 as the GV8's winding down on its season as well. So uh, that's it for me tonight, Kane. I want to wish everybody a, a great evening, and you guys come back next week. You're not going to want to miss one fantastic show, and we'll see you live next week from Road Atlanta.